what is up youtube it is track two in our black sabbath week two and uh, this one is called the wizard a lot of people were asking for the wizard i think um when i did my original black sabbath reactions so we're going to get straight into it guys this is another one that is available for you on Drumio. so if you just click on my link you get free 30-day access over at Drumio. you can go along there and um download a whole bunch of black sabbath songs for free before we get rolling on today's video please do make sure to subscribe it really helps me out hit that like button and leave a comment with what you thought of this video i'm not going to stop this during the song because i want to get the full black sabbathness of it so i'll make some comments at the end and i'll roll through some of your comments from the previous video with that said let's check it out guys absolutely crazy resources available for you guys over at drumio so again i'm gonna follow along with the transcription i don't know if there's gonna be lyrics or not but we'll see it's not expecting that Some kind of 
Choke at the end there. This might be my favorite song so far. I cannot tell you how excited I am to dig into some of these songs, to learn them, to play them, to create some covers and share them on the channel. Hopefully you saw some of my previous Black Sabbath covers. I can see why people requested this one. The independence of the hi-hat kick snare parts and open hi-hat parts. You again using the left foot ostinatos on the hi-hat. I love their use of rubato. If you're not used to uh, those kind of terms, rubato uh, like free time here. So they're obviously just working off uh, some kind of cue in the studio or live to come back in. Um, you know, after those parts to come back into this groove and to, to land back in the time. Cowbell. I think it's the first time I've heard Cowbell in a Black Sabbath song. And the, um, the blues harp. I don't think of... I don't think that's showing up in any of the other songs. The group's not afraid to stretch themselves out, like with uh, Black, uh, Planet Caravan, which I don't think is on this first album, is it? Uh, we had, you know, the, I think it was a Fender Rhodes, um, and different instrumentation, just to, just to contribute and create a new layer of texture, I think. Um, I don't feel like they need it. I feel like they, they use it really judiciously and really smartly. It really fit great in this one. Bill Ward's drum parts are so unusual. I referred in the last video to this term that we use in jazz called comping, where you accompany the soloist, or, or maybe in the rock world you accompany the band, or you accompany the vocals. Bill Ward's parts are so... I don't want to say complicated because complicated makes it sound like they're complicated for complicated sake, but they're really not. They're, they add this percolating groove, this percolating intensity and this, this story within itself. Like the drum, the drum part on its own is very, very musical and creates an intensity through its through how complicated it is. It doesn't need to be as complicated as it is here. Well, it obviously does because Black Sabbath is a fav famous band and Bill Ward's a much loved drummer by those that appreciate Bill Ward. Oh, I've got to say underappreciated in the rest of the drumming world because I never hear, I've never really heard about Bill Ward. But I, I'm sidetracking myself here because I'm just so excited about the drum parts and the songs. Everything is firing on all cylinders. Obviously, it's the first album. I'm assuming the guys were relatively young, excited, you know, to be recording, to getting their stuff down. It was a big deal back then to record an album. Now, you know, you record an album in your bedroom in, in an afternoon. Um, it wasn't like that back then. You know, you had to go into a studio. You had to have a producer. You had to have an engineer. Everything was quite technical and relatively difficult. Yeah, it's not like you just roll in and start using a, a mixing board. You know, it's it's a different. It was a different experience. I mean, for me at the moment, Bill Ward is the master of the setup. And in what I mean by setup is we've got it right here in bar twenty. We get this. I can't remember what this part was. I'm going to listen to it again. Is it a fill he goes into or just the next section of the song? I mean, that is, that's jazz setup 101 with the flam on the snare into the crash on the bass. Crash to hi-hat, flam on the four, crash, crash, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
absolutely blown away with the technical facility of Bill Ward, but always, most of all, the musicality. It's great being technical, but does it sound good? And the musicality when it comes to Bill Ward and the music when it comes to Black Sabbath is always top notch. That, I think I gave the title track from the, the first song of the album, 10 out of 10. That is an 11 out of 10 song. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on this Black Sabbath uh, listen party, I guess you could call it, through the first album. I cannot wait to get to track number three, which is Behind the Wall of Sleep. Man, remember, you can pick up your free 30-day trial with Drumio and you get access to a whole bunch of Black Sabbath songs for free. Just follow my link in the description of each video. Until tomorrow and track three on the Black Sabbath self-titled album, 1970, take care and catch you then.